So I work on a project called Cloud Foundry. It's a big open source project. And, um, but I'm actually here to talk today about a little open source project called Steeltoe. So before we start, I wanted to ask uh, who in the audience are developers? OK, pretty good show. And keep your hand up if you're a .NET developer. Is anybody in the audience .NET? OK, cool. I, I knew it. I'd, I'd at least have one. <laughs> So Steeltoe is a, a little uh, project uh, that brings some really cool microservices patterns to .NET. And uh, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about it today. So just as some contextual background, I want to talk about Cloud Foundry because Cloud Foundry is the ecosystem that Steeltoe came from. And it, as a result, it offers a lot of value in Cloud Foundry. But Steeltoe is open. It's possible to run standalone in other environments. Uh, and I'll talk about all of that. So what is Cloud Foundry if you've never heard of it? Um, it is a PaaS. It's a multi-cloud platform as a service. It runs in your private data center, uh, let's say on uh, vSphere or OpenStack. It runs in the, open, uh, in the public cloud, uh, Azure, AWS, GCP, et cetera. And the difference is it's build pack based. So it's uh, conceptually similar to Heroku if you've used Heroku before, and I bet a bunch of you have. Uh, so because it's build pack based, that means that it's highly extensible and it's very polyglot. Uh, so you can run uh, Ruby, Go, Java. You can run .NET Framework and .NET Core. Uh, there are build packs for all of those, plus Python, PHP, just about anything you can imagine. And it's got this really powerful single command called CF push that allows you to deploy, deploy an application. And behind the scenes, it creates the runtime container, pulls in all the dependencies, uh, et cetera. Um, and the container runtime itself is based on run C. So it's compatible with Docker. You can push a Docker container to it as well. And uh, it integrates with on-demand backing services. So in terms of functionality, it's going to offer a lot of the uh, same and maybe even more functionality than those cool things we saw with Kubernetes and Istio and the open service broker architecture. All right, so this is just a, a brief glance at a architecture slide. My apologies. Uh, but you can see it runs on a variety of clouds at the bottom. And then this layer is based on a uh, uh, um, an infrastructure orchestration technology called Bosch, another very interesting open source project. Um, and then here's the actual Cloud Foundry runtime. And that's, that's kind of where we're going to focus on today. It's actually in this little spot on top where we have some microservices orchestration technologies. So let me, let me dive in. Let me tell you what Steeltoe is and uh, why we built it. It's a brave new world out there. Microsoft is embracing Linux. SQL Server runs on Linux now. .NET runs on Linux. What? And uh, so now you can take .NET applications and run them in the cloud. You could run them on Cloud Foundry. This is, you know, there's lots of crazy things are happening up there in Redmond. It must be something in the water. So the, the challenge is that um, we've got these concepts of 12-factor principles. And uh, if you're a .NET developer, doing things like storing your configuration in the environment or uh, your session state out of process, um, you know, those might seem foreign at first. And we like to lean on things, uh, crutches, like reading and writing to the registry or, or GAC or the local file system. And all of those are now uh, kind of anti-patterns in the cloud. So that's really why we built Steeltoe. And there's actually another reason, too. And that reason is microservices. So you can't go to a conference nowadays and not hear the word microservice bandied about. And if nobody did it before me, then I get to have the honors today. Um, everybody's talking about microservices and how great they are. But the problem is microservices are actually kind of hard. Microservices are distributed systems, and they, uh, microservices architectures are distributed systems, and they introduce a new level of complexity that we never ever had to deal with when we were building monoliths. So if you are trying to troubleshoot a problem in your monolith, chances are it's in your monolith. If you are trying to set some sort of global configuration and read it from anywhere, really easy to do in your monolith. 
not so easy to do if you've got a whole bunch of different microservices. And, and what do you do if one of those microservices you depend on suddenly stops responding? How do you make your application be gay, uh, behave elegantly? Maybe we should all go back to monoliths. So the good news is that there are some great open source solutions to these problems that were built by the great folks at Netflix. And then the Spring community took a lot of that work and made it available uh, to the broader Java community, made it available even if you weren't running on AWS. Um, and that's great. But until now, it's not really been accessible outside of that Java world. So the goal of Steel Toe is to take that stuff and make it available to .NET devs. So more broadly, to help .NET developers build cloud-native applications that can leverage Spring Cloud tooling for resilient microservices. All right, I'm going to talk about what's inside Steel Toe, but just before I get there, a little anecdote about why we called it Steel Toe. So um, does anybody here, uh, are you familiar with Spring and Spring Boot and that ecosystem? So uh, we had a bunch of uh, guys that were from the Spring, the Spring Boot side, and some folks that were involved in a Cloud Foundry project called Iron Foundry, which was a .NET version of Cloud Foundry, a uh, very early and very creative project. And they got together and they said, we need to bring these technologies together. We need the .NET version of Spring Boot. Let's call it Iron Boot. And uh, so while Iron Boot is obviously a really catchy name, somebody just blurted out Steel Toe, and then the rest is history. All right, so what's inside the box? So Steel Toe comes with uh, configuration providers. It leverages uh, the new .NET configuration provider construct, which uh, allows you to read configuration from a variety of different places, uh, from environment variables, from files in the file system, uh, XML, INI, JSON files, um, and command line arguments. And then it loads them all into this uh, multi-level uh, hierarchical configuration dictionary that you can access. So one of the constructs that's available is to build custom providers. So we've added two custom providers to Steeltoe. So the first one is the Cloud Foundry configuration provider. So this allows you to access all the environment variables that are in your application's container. So some of the cool things that Cloud Foundry does for you if you're using this platform is that if you want to bind to a backing service, for example, with one command, you can instantiate a self-service uh, Redis database or a MySQL database, for example. And then it automatically, when you bind your application to that service, it automatically injects all that connection information into a set of environment variables that live inside your container. So this configuration provider gives you access to immediately wire those up without any um, poking around in JSON yourself. So then we've also got a config server configuration provider. Config server is a project from S Spring Cloud that allows you to store your application's configuration uh, in a Git-backed uh, repository. In fact, they've just launched uh, the ability to store it in Vault 2 in case you want to put anything that's a little more secret than you'd want to store in Git. And therefore, your configuration for your application, and this, this configuration is shared across all the microservices that you want to bind using this uh, configuration provider. And you, it also supports tagging, so you could have separate config for different environments, different set of values for development, or a different set of values for test or, or production. And uh, so here's just a, a little look at what that looks like. So you update your config into your Git repo. And then when the config server, your applications come online, they pull that configuration from that Git repository. Um, there are some uh, great tools in the open source version of this that automatically update the applications whenever the, the source config changes. We haven't gotten around to implementing all of that in Steeltoe yet, but that's, that's coming too. Uh, right now, you've got to manually call a refresh endpoint on your application in order to get it to uh, pull new values from your config server. But the advantage is that you could have your application running in memory and never have to stop and restart it to get it to pull new config values. OK, so we've also implemented service discovery with Netflix Eureka. So this is kind of cool. 
So uh, if you've got an application that depends on a bunch of other microservices and they're running at scale and dynamically scaling out and scaling in and instances are being added and subtracted, how do you keep track of all those addresses? How do you know when you're pointing at a healthy instance? Well, one way to, uh, to hack that problem is to use the service discovery pattern. So um, Steeltoe includes a client for Netflix Eureka, which allows you to, uh, here I'll show you, a little bit about how it works. When your, um, when your producer or um, when your microservice comes online that will be consumed by some other service, then it automatically registers itself uh, with the service registry. And then that service registry maintains a list of healthy instances. When a consumer application comes online, it pulls that list down and then uh, it's got HA features built in so that if the server goes offline, it maintains local cached copies, and then your local application can load balance between calls to those different dependent microservices. All right, so Steeltoe, we also built in some cloud connectors to make building applications that leverage these things really easy. These things being uh, databases that we all need, like MySQL or Postgres or Redis, uh, RabbitMQ for message queuing, um, OAuth, for a little security in your application. And then further, we've got some security providers that get a little bit uh, deeper. Uh, so there's a single sign-on provider that leverages OAuth2. Um, if you've got, uh, if you need to access REST APIs that are protected with JIT tokens, then you can do that uh, as well. And then we've also implemented a cloud version of a keyring repository. Uh, instead of depending on a local file system, to write the keys to, uh, this stores them all in Redis. So it's possible to leverage that as well. So Steeltoe, it's a, an open source project. It's flexible. It'll work core, this great new cloud native version of .NET. It'll work with .NET framework if you've got legacy applications and you're trying to uh, strangle the monolith and turn them into microservices. Uh, as a result, it runs both on Windows, it runs on Linux, and it's also perfectly functional standalone as well as Cloud Foundry. So if you're on Cloud Foundry, you probably have access to some great out-of-the-box uh, implementations of Eureka server or um, the, cloud, the Spring Cloud config server. Um, but if you wanted to run one of those, they're all just Java servers. If you wanted to run one on your local machine, if you wanted to run one in a, a Docker container on your Kubernetes cluster, all of that's possible. All right, so just in terms of availability and where we're at, we released our first RC1 in October of last year, and then finally released uh, what we call our GA version on March 31st of this year. So that was a big accomplishment. And uh, what's coming or what's um, missing? I need one of those uh, icons of the, the missing child on a box of milk. Um, so what we're working on right now, and that's really cool, is a circuit breaker implementation that leverages Net Netflix Hystrix. So this, uh, this works where if you've got an application, uh, you've got a microservice you depend on that stops responding and you wanna be able to have some elegant fallback behavior, then uh, it functions like a circuit breaker in your home where after a certain number of failed attempts, the circuit breaker opens and defaults to the fallback behavior. So that'll allow you to, let's say this, this microservice is responsible for one small piece of data on a big page that you're painting for uh, your website. Well, then you can display the whole page. You don't have to break it all with some ugly error message. Um, and then when that service comes back online, the service breaker will close and uh, you'll be able to, to start to access that uh, microservice again. And uh, Netflix has implemented a bunch of dashboards and metrics. There's all sorts of metrics that get emitted from the Service Breaker client. And uh, the various streams are pulled together using this technology called Turbine and displayed on, on dashboards. So, um, so uh, Steeltoe allows you to uh, have a Circuit Breaker client that leverages all of that plumbing from Netflix. And uh, you have the opportunity to have really a polyglot microservices-based application running, uh, you know, let's say Java microservices or Node or, or .NET and uh, leverage all of the same uh, plumbing. So that's, that's the real uh, advantage here. 
All right, if you're interested in getting started, uh, this is the place to go. Uh, we've got uh, quite a few docs and things that uh, you can read that'll, that'll get you there. Um, take a look at our Git repo. We've got a ton of sample applications that include just about every uh, variation and configuration uh, you can imagine. And uh, that's it. <laughs>